You are listening to WCAT Radio, your station for quality Catholic programming. Your selected program will begin right after a word from our sponsor, Group M7.com, a web design and hosting company. Log on to Group M7.com today and let them know that WCAT Radio sent you. You know, my finest childhood memories was the Saturday morning movies for about four bits each. My brother and I could split a Coke and a big box of popcorn and watch movies about Tarzan, Jane, and their Amazon River adventures. Well, maybe that's where Jeff Bezos took his name. His Amazon.com is now the largest online retailer in the world. I'm Michael Malfood with Group M7, the oldest and largest website design firm in East Texas, and here's my point. And as usual, it's a good one. If your website is modern and up-to-date, mobile and search engine friendly, it matters not whether you sell a product or provide information about your goods and services, your sales justifiably will increase just like theirs. The world uses the internet. We can improve your website and your email. Look at our giant portfolio at groupm7.com. Since 1995, there's only one web and there's only one group and it's us. It's Group M7. You're listening to WCAT Radio, your home for authentic Catholic programming. Welcome to Treasures in Heaven. From all of us at WCAT Radio, we're glad you're with us. I'm your host, Dr. William Ailes. In this show, Light and Darkness. The Apostle Paul revealed this startling revelation. The God of this world has blinded the minds of those who do not believe, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. God designed us to receive spiritual light. The prince of the power of the air has another agenda, to blind us. So in this show, we're going to listen to Christ talk about light and darkness. We're also going to listen to the Apostle Paul talk about light and darkness. And we're going to bring in what Peter has to say about judgment upon the darkness of this world and the cause of it. In the Gospel of John, Chapter 3, Jesus is having a conversation with Nicodemus. He talked about being born again. And he said to Nicodemus, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. This is the verdict that light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that it may be revealed that his deeds have been done in God. Jesus Christ told us the truth. He is the light of the world. Light has come into the world. Men love darkness rather than light. Why? Because their deeds were evil. Because they have a different agenda, a personal selfish agenda, which is separate from spiritual light, separate from the truth. Those who reject the Son of God are rejecting the divine light of heaven. 
That's why Christ can say they're condemned already. They have, by their freedom of will, chosen darkness and evil. That's their choice. In the Sermon on the Mount, Christ again talked about darkness and light. Matthew 6, begin in verse 19. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroy and where thieves do not break in nor steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. God is able to see our hearts. He also sees the manifestation of it. Are we worshiping the money machine with a self-serving agenda? With deeds that are evil and self-serving? Storing up treasures on the earth which will be left to someone else and or destroyed? Or are we embracing divine light in a lifestyle that is unconditional love? Storing up treasures in heaven. In fact, the book I wrote is titled Treasures in Heaven. This is such a fascinating study to understand what our Lord is saying. What are treasures in heaven? How do you store them up? And why did he really give us this invitation in the first place? It's a guide to our lives. If we step out the door and see treasures in heaven, it's clear we've accepted his invitation. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where are we storing our treasures? Of course, the earth is a place not to do so. Heaven is a place to do so. Now, this is where Christ talks about light and darkness and God and money. He goes on to say, the light of the body is the eye. Therefore, if your eye is clear, your whole body will be full of light. If your eye is clear, meaning you're accepting spiritual light. You're allowing the light in. Your whole body is full of light. Storing up treasures in heaven is about what we see, changing what we see in this world, how we see this world, how we see ourselves. We seek after the light. We see the light. Verse 23. But in contrast, if your eye is unclear, or darkened, your whole body will be full of darkness. That's the other agenda. Deeds that are evil, steering away from truth, whole body full of darkness. Therefore, if the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Darkness is the absence of light. It's a willful decision on the part of an individual to embrace darkness and evil and reject divine light. We have had this amazing opportunity. Here we are in the 21st century, looking back 20 centuries to the time of the Son of God walking in the Holy Land. No one spoke as the Son of God did. No one did the miracles he did. He is the anointed one of God. He is the one prophesied all throughout the Old Testament from Moses to Malachi. He's the one the followers of Moses were waiting for. And we, when we embrace him, enter his spiritual kingdom on this planet. And of course, our heart's desire is to live the light that we have been given, we have been granted. So we have light, we have darkness, we have treasures on the earth, treasures in heaven. Obviously, storing up treasures on the earth, neglecting treasures in heaven is a body full of darkness where the eye is dark and the eye is unclear and cannot even let divine light in because a decision has been made not to. It's a tragic situation. This is what Christ says. He continues in his Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 6. 
No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. There it is. We have an opportunity to worship and serve the Lord God Almighty, Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, creator of the heavens and the earth, or tragically and unfortunately and quite frankly, pathetically, to worship and serve money. The worshipers of the money machine in this world are blinded by the prince of the power of the air. But here we see this divide. The worshipers of God who serve God seek to store up treasures in heaven and have a light in their body that is filling their body with light. And then there's the contrast, the complete opposite, worshiping and serving money, storing up treasures on the earth, evil deeds. Eye is unclear or darkened with a body full of darkness. It's a choice made by every human being. And we're going to read more about that, what Christ has to say. I'm going to head over to the Gospel of Mark. We're going to continue with what Christ is saying regarding this. Not storing up treasures on the earth. Not worshiping and serving money. It doesn't say that we don't need money. We need money. But what's our priority? Mark 8, verse 34. And when he, Christ, had called the people to him with his disciples, he said to them, If any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. We have an idea of what it means to take up his cross. Obviously, he's not talking about taking up a wooden cross and walking around town with a cross on our shoulders. There's a symbolism here, of course. And Christ is going to go into this. But we've already seen a glimpse into what it means to take up his cross. Storing up treasures in heaven is taking up his cross. Worshiping and serving God is taking up his cross. These are things that Christ did. We're doing what he did. But let Christ continue here, verse 35 in Mark 8. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever would lose his life for my sake and the Gospels will save it. In other words, when we have ourselves as Lord of our own life, where we are our own priority, we're saving our own life. And, and the consequence is we lose our soul. But whoever would lose his life for my sake and the Gospels will save it. That's our salvation. We're losing our life. In other words, we're no longer Lord of our own life. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is Lord of our life. We've lost our life to him. And it's the best life you can live. That's what it means. Whoever would lose his life for his sake in the Gospels will save it. Our soul is saved by making him our Lord. No longer us as Lord. We bow our knee to the Son of God and listen to what he has to say about living the best life possible. Verse 36. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul. There's the contrast. Gaining the whole world. Gaining power, authority, position, status, money, stuff, material goods. Storing up treasures on the earth. Self-serving agenda. I unclear. Body darkened. What does it profit a man if he does gain the whole world and loses his own soul? That's a serious consequence one that I would not want to pay. What is worth that? Verse 37, or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Whoever therefore is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father 
with the holy angels. That's a How do we even put this into words? To be ashamed of Christ and his words. Think about that, what, what that means. That someone would choose, rather, to conform to the adulterous and sinful generation of the culture, gaining money, status, power, storing up treasures on the earth because they're ashamed of Christ and his words. Yes. He was crucified. He did die, but he went to the cross willingly as our sacrifice. He was the absolute complete success in the crucifixion. Unlike those who think he failed, he is the ultimate sacrifice for sin, which allows us to have our sins cleansed, not covered like the Old Testament when they sacrificed animals. It covered their sins. But it could never cleanse them and make them perfect inside. As Hebrews states, for by one offering we are sanctified by the body of Jesus Christ. And those who are sanctified are forever perfected because that Holy Spirit within is perfect. We're not ashamed of the Son of God. I embrace him in every word. I embrace the revelation he gave to the apostles. The apostles didn't just sit down one day under a tree and pull out a, you know, a leaf and a pen and start scribbling what they thought should be in the Bible. This is revelation from Christ himself. As Paul said in Galatians, I received it not by the will of man, but revelation from Jesus Christ. As he said to Timothy, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Peter wrote, holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. This is Holy Spirit inspired words. We lose our life for his sake and the gospel's. It's not just losing our life for Christ's sake. It's the gospel's sake, for the sake of the good news, that we live it, become a living epistle, and now we share it by the way we live our lives and speak, think, act. We're not ashamed of Christ and his words. No, no, it's the complete opposite. We embrace it and we speak of it openly. So the contrast between light and darkness, Jesus Christ made it very clear. Now I want to move on to the revelation that he gave to the Apostle Paul and where we started. This is in 2 Corinthians, Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. And in chapter 4, verse 4, Paul states, The God of this world has blinded the minds of those who do not believe. Let's stop right there. Those who do not believe in the name of the Son of God are blinded. They're not enlightened. They're darkened and blinded. There is a cause behind this effect. It's the God of this world. God, G, lowercase. Paul uses different terms to describe Satan, the devil, our adversary, refers to him as the prince of the power of the air in Ephesians, refers to him as the god of this world in 2 Corinthians 4.4. Yes, he is the prince of the power of the air. That's a, a way to understand god of this world. Satan commands legions of his own darkened angels. In that way, he is a god of this world or the God, because he is the one commanding these legions of angels, the devil spirits, the demons. They're always operating as Antichrist, claiming that Christ did not come in the flesh, as John told us in his first letter. Anyone who claims that Christ, the anointed one, has not come in the flesh is of the spirit of Antichrist. doesn't mean that they're personally possessed, but they're being influenced By the spirit of anti-Christ. That's the God of this world blinding the minds of those who do not believe. 
What is the remedy? The light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God shining on them. That's the contrast. When it comes right down to it in this world, you have those in the kingdom of Christ and you have those who have chosen not to be in the kingdom of Christ. That's it. Yes, there are Jews, Gentiles, Church of God. God sees the world in three categories. The Church of God, the Kingdom of Christ, those who have embraced his Son, and that those who reject him. Of course, Gentiles who don't embrace anything of the Old and New Testament. And the Jews, or followers of Moses, who embrace the Old Testament but are currently blinded and don't see that Christ is the Messiah. So Jews and Gentiles are in the category of not the kingdom of Christ, not the church of Christ. They have chosen not to embrace the divine light sent by heaven. So the God of this world has blinded the minds of those who believe not. The God of this world wants man to store up treasures on the earth, wants man to worship and serve money. Who plotted against the Christ? The religious leaders of the temple, Pharisees and Sadducees. They loved money, as Christ said in the Gospels. Their priority was very different than what it should have been. They loved money, the power, the prestige, the chief seats at the big occasions, you know, always making their faces look defigured when they're fasting, wailing in the streets so everyone can see how religious they are. Christ said they have their reward, the little worship of men that they seek. That's their reward. That's not what we seek in the kingdom. We seek how one day we will hear from our Lord, well done, thou good and faithful servant. So Paul continues, for we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. That's what it means to lose our life and find it. We don't preach ourselves. We don't, you know, have an ego puffed up and how great we are, but we preach Christ the Lord. We read Christ the Lord and his words and his revelation. And Paul, servants for Jesus' sake. 2,000 years ago, Paul saying he's servants for Jesus' sake. That's what we are. We are sons of God by birth, but horizontally we are servants for Jesus' sake. Yeah. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. What a verse. 2 Corinthians 4, 6. Read that every morning for a week. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Our eyes are open. Our eyes are clear to allow our bodies to be flooded with light, as Christ said in the Sermon on the Mount. Paul's repeating it here. God commanded the light to shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. What other way is there to live? We have embraced the truth of Jesus Christ. We can see right through Satan's schemes. We can see through what a lie truly is, that this lie that the Messiah did not come in the flesh, spirit of Antichrist. You know what Paul said in... Second Corinthians, he talked about 
how Satan can transform himself. I want to read this. We have to be vigilant, vigilant, excuse me, vigilant, like vigilantes, if you will, spiritually, not letting anyone change our mind. Paul said, for I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy. Paul was jealous for those that he won to Christ. He wanted them to to remain steadfast and faithful in the faith that they knew. He didn't want to lose them to lies and, you know, the God of this world. For I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. We, as the church of Christ, are the bride of Christ. We are the chaste virgin because we have been cleansed of our sin, made righteous through the blood of Christ. We will be presented ultimately and married to our Lord for eternity. Paul says, but I fear that somehow as the serpent, meaning Satan, deceived Eve through his trickery, so your minds might be led astray from the simplicity that is in Christ. Yes, the battlefield is definitely in the mind. It's always a fun daily task to allow light to flood our eyes and our hearts and our minds, our souls, so it guides our steps. So we are are not led astray from the simplicity that is in Christ. He is the ultimate sacrifice for sin. We embrace him as our Lord. We lose our life for Christ's sake and the gospel's sake. For if he who comes and preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, which you have not received, or another gospel, which you have not accepted, you might submit to it readily enough. In other words, if someone comes along and contradicts the Apostle Paul, if you're not sharp, you might submit to it. We have to have our feet grounded in Scripture, grounded in our faith. That's a life worth living. Paul says, I will continue doing what I'm doing. And then Paul speaks of false apostles and deceitful workers disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, verse 14, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also disguise themselves as ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. The best example we have from Scripture of Satan disguising himself through his ministers disguising themselves as ministers of righteousness for the temple authorities who plotted to kill the Christ. He told them point blank in John 8, your father is the devil. It's literally true. They had allowed themselves to be given over to darkness because of their love of money, their greed, their deeds were evil. Christ came along with great clarity loving deeds, divine light, and they killed them. Well, they put the Romans up to it. Yes, the Romans physically did it, but they were the ones who plotted. So, yes, their works, their end will be according to their works. Well, look at that. Their works were to plot against the Son of God, and that's what their end will be, like John the Baptist said, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? They were so steeped in darkness because they were storing up treasures on the earth. They did seek to fan their big egos. And they were not grounded in their own scriptures. So here we are in the 21st century. 
We'll get to what Peter said about judgment in another show. But I wanted to come back to where we started. How the God of this world has blinded the minds of those who do not believe, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. And then we just go right to the heart of the matter. What does it mean? And all we have to do is turn to our Lord and Savior what he spoke. You cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve God and money. Why waste time storing up treasures on the earth when we can use this life to store up treasures in heaven? Embracing the light, flooding our body, our soul, our mind, and our strength with divine light. That's a life worth living. Well, from all of us at WCAT Radio, God bless you, and good night. The mission of Holy Apostles College and Seminary is to form faithful witnesses of Christ. Year after year, the prestigious Newman Guide has recommended Holy Apostles for our academic excellence and steadfast fidelity to the magisterial teachings of the Catholic Church. We are also fully accredited and the leader in Catholic online learning. Our students enjoy the unsurpassed flexibility to study on their own time and anywhere in the world through asynchronous engagement. Holy Apostles is dedicated to the relentless pursuit of truth, which allows students in all academic programs, including undergraduate, graduate, and personal interest, to formulate a coherent worldview based on both faith and reason. The study of the liberal arts also develops and refines key competencies associated with career readiness, such as critical thinking and problem solving, clear communication, collaboration, and a strong work ethic. The tuition rate at Holy Apostles is one of the most affordable in the country. Yearly tuition for a full-time undergraduate is under $12,000. Students at Holy Apostles can graduate with minimal or even no college debt, which enables them to live out their calling as faithful witnesses of Christ without heavy financial burdens holding them back. Please visit www.holyapostles.edu forward slash admissions for more information. The fall 2021 admissions deadline is Friday, July 23rd. Classes start Monday, August 30th. See you soon. Hello, God's beloved. I'm Annabelle Mosley, author, professor of theology, and host of Then Sings My Soul and Destination Sainthood on WCAT Radio. I invite you to listen in and find inspiration along this sacred journey we're traveling together to make our lives a masterpiece and, with God's grace, become saints. Join me, Annabelle Mosley, for Then Sings My Soul and Destination Sainthood on WCAT Radio. God bless you. Remember, you're never alone. God is always with you. Thank you for listening to a production of WCAT Radio. Please join us in our mission of evangelization. And don't forget, love lifts up where knowledge takes flight.